So good morning, everybody, or uh, well, afternoon or evening. Actually, you could be watching this at any time, but it is very early here in the UK. And I'm very, very lucky to have Tanya Luck with me from Western Australia. So grab yourselves a cup of tea, cup of coffee, glass of wine, whatever time and whatever is your fancy and uh, listen to us while we chat all about Tanya's life in the aqu aquatic environment. So good morning to you, Tanya, or good afternoon to you. <laughs> good afternoon, Linda, and I hope nobody's having a glass of wine at breakfast, but it's your choice. <laughs> <laughs> so um, tell me a little bit about your journey. You, you're, um, and I've seen some of your stuff online, um, and it's quite an amazing journey and it looks like amazing places that you work. But how did you start off in the industry? What was mm. your what was your beginning? Well, I would have to say my beautiful father. Uh, he's always a subsea consultant. So through his work and also being a diver, I mean, he pretty much threw me in the water from three months old. And I always remember, you know, being on a motor scooter with him underneath the water and having a lot of different water experiences. So my father really. And then from there, um, my work just ended up being in very different places once I got older, you know, very similar to you. Linda, I started a journey with infant swimming and then um, I got asked to teach in some private pools in, in, uh, in Mexico. Um, I also started doing some um, work in uh, hospitals and I just it just kept on coming at me the the water experiences so I have to say my father was a big influence on my life being in water fabulous absolutely fabulous yeah so, so what sort of um things do you do now where where is your journey sort of taken you now yes well I the last eight years I've been working uh, very strongly with a group of health professionals um, such as psychologists and nurses and doctors and dietitian working with vulnerable groups. Mm -hmm. So it's mainly been focused on uh, mental health mm -hmm. and associated trauma. So I've found that the water has been a place to blend that. There's been some uh, people that I follow that focus on trauma uh, such as um, Bessel van der Kock and Gabor Mate and Peter Levine, and they all have a common thread, which is we need to to focus on our our breathing, our movement and touch. And it just became aware to me that, or, or really conscious to me, that the water offers that. It offers all three, and it's quite powerful. And as you know, we do have a mental health crisis even more so now with COVID. And uh, and for me, the journey has been blending those two, water and well-being, and that's been my last. That's it's pretty been my pretty much been my life journey, but really consciously the last eight years. That's amazing. As you said, you know, there's there's so much with the sort of mental health aspect of things. So, yeah. do you think now, especially with um, COVID and everything, do you think you're going to see a lot more people that are going to come with PTSD from the, you know, from the well, mm. being locked in. I know you're not locked inside as much as we have been over here, but yeah. you know, the I suppose the effects of the global pandemic and everything. Do you think it's we we are, and it's getting worse. And particularly, you know, when there is a lockdown, it's it's really tough, particularly on families and uh, women that are trapped in domestic violence um, situations and. And I think also we're connecting less and obviously we, we're trying to connect through these means, but um, the less that we're connecting, the less we're able to, to be able to take care of our mental health states. And one of the things that really striked me um, that I try and sell when I go out to the, to the, um, like the big institutes and I might do like a little talk on, um, on why water when they're all like gym junkies yeah. <laughs> is to, to really tell them that, uh, I can do a yoga class, Pilates class, probably a gym workout, you know, the 24 seven gyms online, but water is one of the few, few places that's been touched. And if you read through one of the reports by WHO, the World Health Organization, uh, basically there's been no cases whatsoever with COVID. So in water. So I'm, I'm actually really have a lot of faith that uh, water exercise for all of us is really going to boom. Yeah. 
yeah. it's going to be a place for mental health as well i think so definitely I think the therapy yeah you know because i always say to sort of people that it's like a, a virtual hug you know because it's tactile it touches oh, everything that's a lovely way to put it. you know it's, it's i think it's it is it's that that sort of hugging um especially for myself it became very evident uh many many years ago i had a lady that used to come to the class and she um she was always at the front of the class she was wanting to work really hard and every week you know can we make it harder can we make it harder and she was a carer for her husband and her husband was terminally ill and when he passed away she went from being that aggressive one at the front of the class working really really hard to what i always term as a tea and biscuit brigade on the back row the ones that are sort of there but not really doing anything within it and i think it was at that point that i sort of realized that some people don't necessarily come for the workout they they come for the sort of the contact for that touch because she was no longer being hugged you know in fact her family had, her children had moved to australia so there was mm. no one once he had passed to give her that hug and the water was doing that for her. So I think, you know, the, the sort of value of that that tactile element of the water, I sort of, I learned way back then. So Absolutely. Yeah. And I'd just like to touch on that because I, I love the way that you explained it, Linda. I just think it's really beautiful and and you, and you understanding um, fascia and the body and how, um, and, and also everything that I've been learning over these years, fascinated with how trauma can get stuck in the fascia in the body. You know, water is a place that is unconditional, you know. So if you if we find that, you know, there's there's people that come to the sessions and and particularly when we're doing flotation at the end in aqua balance and I might add a bit of sound vibration therapy, which I learnt learnt uh, in Costa Rica three years ago when I went over for a conference, it's really powerful and people saying you know, this is the first time in ages that I felt peace, you know, because yeah. the water can take that trauma, the water can receive it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really powerful. And that tactile touch, you know, um, that you were talking about, um, there was a study that uh, was done at the University of Western Australia and Aqual Being was asked to be involved. And it was looking at dementia and how um, individuals proprioceptive awareness and kinesthetic awareness was really improved when they were immersed in the water, which is something that they might not get on land, you know, being yeah. aware that, hey, I've got limbs and, you know, so it's it's so powerful. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's the same actually with people with hypermobility because I I have a massive interest in, in hypermobility. And again, when they're in the water, if I, I say to them, if you actually wear like leggings and a long sleeve t-shirt, they, they yes. say then that they can actually feel their limbs, which, you know, the proprioception on someone who's hypermobile is absolutely, you know, I, I would say shocking, but that's not the word, but they, they don't, yeah. don't know where yeah. their limbs are and things. So it's, it's, it is, it's the best environment. I've missed it terribly. I have. <laughs> so. We need it for us too. And that's something that I've realized since I've been, on leave and I got a bit of, it was a bit worn out last year and now I found it for myself again, just doing sessions yeah. for myself. I take my MP3, my water MP3 and I just, I just do something for Tanja. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's so necessary for, for, for you, for me, for, for, as a, as an aquatic therapist to, to actually remember, it can't just be about our clients. Yeah. We've got to give back to ourselves too. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. So tell tell me um, a little bit about um, your sort of what, what sort of things you do in the pool. If you, I, mean, I know it's hard to describe what you do. But it's very intuitive and very. But, oh hello! <laughs> I know I've got somebody crashing things in the background here. Um, really yes, yeah, so so it. basically, uh, when it comes to, I mean, just. The main program that I will talk about, obviously, is Aqua Balance. Mm -hmm. However, we do offer other training. So, so really, Aqua Wellbeing offers um, communities, uh, groups, um, as well as organisation training and experiences. But uh, Aqua Balance itself has really been influenced by a lot of the work that I have been doing with this organisation with regards to. Um, supporting people through their mental health journey and um, 
helping them unlock um, their trauma. I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm definitely not a, a psychologist or anything, but I've worked with some incredible therapists that have given me some tools. And, um, and, and what I could say is that for me, um, Aquabalance itself is, it's a tool uh, and it's been uh, a tool that I've developed from such a variety of uh, the teachings that I've learnt and it's like I could never say that I'd get bored you know there's so much to learn and it's and I and it's the water is one place where you can blend all of those things that you love mindfulness yoga dance meditation you know new to me the last four years has been sudden vibration in water I'm finding that really fascinating and how that works on the musculoskeletal system because there's actually evidence on that and um, so yeah, I'm finding that uh, the the water uh, uh, for us, you know, with aqua well being is is blending well being and water together because I do believe the two are totally interconnected, just like the mind, body, and spirit. Absolutely. Tell me, because we don't really have very much over here the the, the sound bowls. So, mm. so explain to us a little bit about that mm. and the sort of how it sure. works. Sure. So, so basically, um, my sound bowl, who, who I've named a Tibetan name called Lusak Khan, <laughs> which means water spirit, um, it's out of seven metals, and it's you really need to get a very quality sound bowl, one that um, is handmade. Uh, and the way that it works is, in water, the when when you're playing the bowl around somebody, so you've got to be very gentle when you're working around the head area, or you can go a little bit more powerfully when you're working around internal organs or around the musculoskeletal system. The vibration is amplified massively in water compared to um, when you're playing it just yeah. on land, mm -hmm. and you can actually feel it. You can feel the vibration. You can you can actually see the vibration as well. It's very genius work um, by a water therapist by the name of Javier Gonzalez. And uh, yeah, I'm giving him a plug here because he is really brilliant. Mm -hmm. And I am seeing, I don't know what's happening in England, but I'm seeing sound vibration everywhere, but not necessarily in water. And I do believe this is another level of therapy. And um, but yeah, basically that's how it works. It, apparently it just helps um, enhance our own healing process the same as many different forms of healing can. Acupuncture, yeah. whether, you, whether you're open to Reiki, all of these other concepts. It's vibration. It's mm. funny because I, I bought um, vibration into one of the lectures that I did, I think, Gosh, because I've, I've lost a year, I can't remember whether it's 2020 or 2019. I know, I know, it's true. Yeah, it's very weird. But it's, um, I then started reading on the different frequencies and I got very involved in that. So, I mean, do we know what frequency the bowls vibrate at or is it different ones, different yeah. different speeds? Yeah, and things? For, there's, there's going to be different frequencies and you can generally measure it on your phone with one of those um guitar tuners oh, right. but it's 432 hertz that you actually want uh, because apparently that's the vibration yeah of nature and that's what he that's what he uh trained us in using that yeah it was very very interesting um but we did a solid three days training and after the training it took a while for me to get grounded again so i think in small amounts was my personal thing that I took away from it yeah. small amounts but I like to do it as a, as a group at the end of the session and so everybody receives it and I use it a lot in my work because I also teach um, uh, trauma-informed yoga and yoga nidra and I use it in that as well and it's quite powerful most most all the groups love it you know even the cultural groups Aboriginal groups they all love it yeah there's something in the sound absolutely because I, I I'd read about um, the sort of the DNA repair that that if you have a, a certain frequency um, and I'm not going to sort of give too much away because it's uh, yeah. a I can't remember the exact frequencies for each different thing is one of the main reasons yeah. it's interesting for people to sort of look up and look further into it for themselves but you've got to sure that 
that if the body vibrates and if you play a certain frequency of music or sound, then um, mm. sort of disease can't stick to the DNA and that they, they mm. use sound frequencies to actually help um, sort of resolve the oil spill in Mexico. Um, when other mm -hmm. techniques hadn't worked. So it's actually when you start going into that vibration and, and the sound frequencies, the different things, and there is a, there is the one for trauma and there's the one for, um, um, I said, the, the DNA repair. And there's, oh, there's about five different frequencies that I read up. But um, yeah, as I said, I yeah, can't remember. I'm pretty sure like... A lot of that's in this manual that I received also from yeah. Javier. You know, he really was very detailed with it. And then, of course, you know, you, you'll see that people will work with um, the energetic wills, the chakras as well, and yoga and on the different yeah. um, chakras as well. But, I mean, from a scientific point of view as well, it's, um, it's quite amazing and effective. I really believe it. Because I don't know about you, but as I've, as I've gotten older, I have found... Um, I'm more sensitive to sound. In fact, in fact, I'm finding myself walking around with headphones trying to block out the noise of traffic and, and, I, and I really like to stay in this really nice calm zone. And so something shifted <laughs> to yeah, my nervous system. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think the same because, you know, it's a, sort of loud, loud music. Perhaps it's an age thing because you sit in there and think that a lot of older people, yeah, sit there and go, I, I don't like that sound. Um, oh, that, that's an admission, isn't it? <laughs> oh dear so what about um your sort of like your journeys with the yoga and the, and the plantings and things like that sort of you know are, did you do the sort of classical land training and bring it to water which is what we tend to have to do over here um yeah i didn't train in india like my son who's done a lot of courses but um i definitely went and did uh, all the classical training yeah. and then specialized mainly in women's health and yoga rehabilitation and then over the last um three years my work has financed me to do uh trauma-informed yoga which is uh really important now for every practitioner really to be yeah. honest uh and then pilates um Pilates, I've mainly focused on uh, just mat Pilates. Yeah. Not, I haven't done any machine Pilates, yeah. but I work with the um, W. Sorry. I said you can't take them in the pool, of the machine. No, <laughs> no. But I've worked with the WA School of Pilates yeah. um, for yeah. seven months to create one of the Aqua Balance forms, which is Core. So Aqua Balance has five forms: it's Core, Water Pilates. Qi, which actually derives from Qi Gong. And quite often people, uh, the challenge I've had actually has been people mistaking it with I Qi, but it's actually very unique. Again, it's more probably more psychology and different movements. Then there's um, water flow. Uh, then there's water union, which is the uh, yoga in water, which I've been doing quite a few years now. And then, um, and then the last one is water dance, which is very exciting for me because um, it's very, uh, very um, dynamic, the movements, and really beautiful. And I've actually drawn from, uh, inspired by my son, who's very interested in Lakota Indian um, history. And I've, I've drawn a lot from the Lakota Indian uh, storytelling and wisdom. So it's, uh, it's very different. Again, I don't, don't think there's anybody doing anything like that. Yeah, no. It's fabulous yeah. when you can sort of like find something and, and sort of create really sort of like bring it yeah. into and create this sort of fusion of of things so I think that's yeah. my sort of favorite now so I've definitely gone from the sort of jumping around on poolside into creating a fusion of more holistic oh. really. I think that's, that's lovely really and we'll never stop we can do this up into our 90s or until 100 I swear we can <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you know, sort of when when your sort of hands give out from treating on land, because I do treat on land as well, then, uh, but you can still sort of treat in the pool. You know. Yeah. I, as I said, I, my body's missing being in the water, definitely. So. Yes, you do feel it. You yeah, do. Absolutely. Mm. It's sort of like going home, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Oh, dear. Mm. Um, so, I mean, with with the mental health stuff, because I quite 
I quite um I think as, as we said it's it's a really important aspect that's sort of coming in well come, it's always mm. been there but it's coming to yeah. people's forefronts really of their mm. their minds what sort of things do you think a little sort of like gem that maybe when the pools reopen over here and people mm. get back to teaching is there any little gems that you can sort of give them to, mm. to actually mm. yeah try and incorporate yeah look i i believe that um just by practicing all the fundamentals you know such as breathing in the water um in our dance form for example we always have a different breathing technique and one of the breathing techniques we do is uh, one to activate the vagus nerve, mm -hmm. uh, which is our, for people that don't know, you, you would know, but uh, it's the 10th cranial nerve um, that connects from the brain to the gut. And, and basically can get us out of, a, out of a, a situation of fight, flight, freeze. I wouldn't say one of balance because that's quite debatable, but it would get us out of that panic state. Mm -hmm. And these things can be practiced so beautifully in the water because we've got the hydrostatic pressure um, against all the central thoracic area. And so when you're breathing and you're doing these, this technique, which basically involves a longer exhale with a little pause in the breath, uh, you can really bring people back to an incredible state of calm and focus in as little as two minutes. So breathing would be one that I would say uh, can really help with our mental health states. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I've been using a lot of different um, therapeutic techniques that I've learned from um, the, the psychologists that I work with and taking them into the water. And one of my favorites actually derives from uh, two psychologists uh, that helped out with a hurricane Pauline in Mexico many years ago, and it's called the butterfly hug. And, and basically it's beautiful in the water and I incorporated it within the dance and it's just crossing the thumbs and just doing a very gentle tap. Just tip the tip of the fingertips where there's lots of sensory nerve endings just on the clavicle and just allowing yourself to breathe in and breathe out in the water and just sinking and rising with it. And it's, it's very, very calming and it can help people when they're about to feel, you know, anxiety. So there's, there's two. Do you need more? <laughs> So, well, let's let's just backtrack a little bit to the first one. Um, okay. So, when you're doing oh, yes. the breathing and everything, are yes. are we suggesting vertical or horizontal? So I'm suggesting vertical. Yeah, and I'm also suggesting that it is uh, like an invisible chair against the wall, mm -hmm. and the reason for that to make sure that the sacrum's in contact, the shoulders and the feet, is to keep people grounded as you do it. Yeah. And generally what I would be doing is I'd ask them to be to be feeling the you know the lateral expansion of their ribs first and just to feel through that. And then we just and then we just do a cycle which is just eight four four, which is um, a breath in for four. And we allow them to rise a little bit out of the water. Yeah. And then there's no breath in or out for four. And what's really important here is, you know, you need to, need to be mindful of um, people that might be pregnant or have high blood pressure or heart conditions because we don't want them to versalva. We don't, we don't want to initiate that versalva manoeuvre where they're holding the breath and causing that intra-abdominus pressure. So we just let them just have that moment of space. And then the out breath is sinking down underneath the water for eight and it just feels so calming even just doing one cycle yeah. so uh, we tend to do 10 and I do it in a way that um, just sort of came to me one day we've got 10 fingers we don't need to count because during the whole process of aqua balance and when we're teaching this technique is we don't want to switch on that prefrontal cortex mm -hmm. we just want them to be in a more of a hypnagogic state yeah. So we just use our fingers in, no breath, before and then out. And I say, just think about opening your fingers like a little flower and we, we can do that in the water for each one. And that all just ties together. And then they're ready to do their, their dance form and they're all totally focused and moving together like you see Tai Chi in the park. It's beautiful. I want to get in and try it myself now. Yes. <laughs> Do as soon as you can, even in the bathtub if you have to. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Oh dear. Yeah. So, 
Have you always been involved in the water or have you ever worked in anything else? Because I think this is quite interesting yeah. as well. You yeah, know, I believe, I guess, from my father, you know, I've always been involved in the water. I've even, I've even been in a mermaid film. Uh, <laughs> everybody's got to try mermaiding at some point. I'm sure you probably have. Uh, but prior to that, I've always been working with groups. Um, after I did my um, Bachelor of Arts in Science uh, and also in Language, I actually went northwest and started working with um, Aboriginal groups. And and then what else have I done? I've in um, it's always been about bringing groups together. Even when I was in Israel, you know, we all do our Israel journey, you go on a kibbutz or a moshav. I did both. Even then, um, I was I had the job that everybody was a bit annoyed with me because I got to bring the the um, the young Israeli. Um, residents together with the tourists and I did the social club back then while everybody else was working hard in the factory and in the in the farm all day mm -hmm. but I've always at some point always found myself in the water as well you know even in people's private homes and and I started it's funny because I started out in resorts in North America and then I've ended up going back into resorts it's yeah. like it's been this real cycle going back in and and I'm finding it, it can be a real challenge uh, getting spaces in aquatic centres now because swimming is a priority over here in, in Australia. So that's why I end up having to use, um, you know, either health resorts or, or um, lifestyle villages or a hospital if I can get it. Yeah. I was at University yeah. of WA last week yeah, because it was school holidays. So, um, but yeah, I've, I think all of my previous jobs were about bringing, you know, cultural, linguistically diverse and Aboriginal cultures and people together. So that must have been fascinating working with the Aboriginal cultures because mm. that must have influenced as well what, you, what you've taken into the water because I, I think so. And, and interestingly happy. enough, even though there's not much swimming ability in a lot of those cultures, I also do a little bit of work for Rural Life Saving Society WA uh, and we're trying to improve water safety, you know, for a lot of the more remote areas. Um, a lot of those cultures really love, you know, Aboriginal culture really have an affinity with with water and and a and a respect for water and quite often water is associated with a sacred place. Yeah. Sacred places. Um, I did some beautiful filming of Aqua Balance in a in a gorgeous place in WA called Karangini and it's it's like going into this ancient womb. It's just amazing. And the fact that the Aboriginal culture sees water as like sacred places and usually just for women, mm -hmm. it's it's funny because that's how I feel when I get in water, that it's just, it's my sacred space. I'm sure you do too. Absolutely. <laughs> if you get it to yourself, it's amazing. <laughs> it is, it is. Well, I know mm. that um, it just seems like a very appropriate point to yes. introduce your video that you your clip. Your, your okay clip. yeah so i think you know this is you well i don't know if is it you in the clip yes i'm in there um i've even got my beautiful son in there um a bit like your beautiful Haley. um he's had to learn the yoga and the water and all of these different things and be my my, my backup and yeah. and also he's been my teacher we learn from our children as well absolutely it's wonderful it is wonderful. Yeah, and this is a beautiful pool in Indonesia that uh, I run four four times a year. Not not this year, mm -hmm. but four times a year we do a study on retreat. Uh, so you get your, your aqua balance course, you get a massage every day, you get healthy organic food, and it is the most incredible pool I have been in my life because it's in a cave, and it overlooks the ocean. It's amazing. I'll Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So that's Hopefully. fabulous as well. <laughs> Hopefully we can minimise me out of the way. All right, so I'll minimise us. Yes.
Stop the share and I'm back. We go. It's fabulous, and it's good that you had your uh, your um, wellbeing.com um, web page on it as well, so people can contact. Oh you. yes, yeah. At the end, yeah. It was it was a lot longer that clip, but I've shortened it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they can always find it, and they can always find you. So that's right. You can find me. That's it. So I think. Um, you know, as as we sort of share across the world, there'll be people probably that are, are mm -hmm. local and can come over. But um, I would love to at some point, hopefully, join you and one of Linda, your please. You are more than welcome, and I'll make sure you get a massage every day. Right. And I would love to learn from you. I I just think that you have so much to share in Australia that we're not doing. So I do hope you come. That would be good. Well, perhaps we'll have to we'll have to arrange that. We'll have to sort it. Oh. Um, yep, totally. Totally. <laughs> I'll make, I'm a let's make things happen person now. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so I think we've sort of like talked a little bit about the, the yoga element and we've talked mm. about the, well, the mental element and the breathing and everything. I mm. think the only thing we haven't really covered is the Pilates aspect. Mm. So talk us a little bit through how that sort of developed for you. Yeah. So um, we, I, we actually got together with the WA School of Pilates. They were the key uh, people that we worked with because um, I just didn't feel that my mat training was enough and I really wanted to have some expertise in it. And it was really about figuring out how these exercises adapted to the water and a lot of the time we discovered that we needed to use the wall and the wall is kind of like your floor mm -hmm. but you've really got to analyze the exercise like i always say to my students there's three questions you have to ask yourself if you're not sure how to adapt this land exercise to the water and it might not look anything like the land exercise yeah. one is what's the purpose of that exercise like in terms of for a daily functional movement purpose and second you know what what muscle groups are we actually engaging and using and which muscle groups are we also releasing and relaxing because that's how you create that effortless movement and thirdly how can you put this into the water and so um the journey involved a lot of those kind of questions and I worked with a wonderful um, Pilates instructor by the name of Anita Lawrence, who used to be a Miss Body Body Figure yeah. builder. Yeah. I've never seen anybody so asymmetrical. In fact, um, she's got pictures of herself with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's when I started learning about open and closed chain kinetics and how important it is. Uh, to actually use the wall every now and then because we can't just be free floating as well. Mm -hmm. So um, so we adapted a lot of those exercises. I was very fortunate as well at the time to be working with Aquatics, um, which used to be Okeo, which is an Italian company. So I was blessed to have a lot of their equipment as well to put into it. Uh, but the way that I've um, developed the water, the water Pilates, which we see a thousand and one people doing now, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, was basically with that WA school. But what I found really interesting is you think that you've learned it all, you've seen it all. Uh, and when I was over in Costa Rica, which was, um, I think that was 20, 
2018, I went over uh, to to um, present uh, Aquabalance, which was a challenge because I had to do it in Spanish. <laughs> wow. um, I met a, an amazing uh, water Pilates therapist by the name of Marcelo Roque, and he's uh, Brazilian. And his water Pilates were, is, for me, is next level. I don't think I'd seen like so anybody really adapt it the way that he has done it so specifically. So I have a hold a lot of respect for Marcelo and I have permission to use some of his work in my Aquabalance, which is I'm excited to share. Excellent. Mm. Excellent. Mm. So what what um, when you're teaching, I, I saw in, in the clip that you use the noodle. Uh, is there any other equipment that you use? Mm, well, you've yeah. obviously got the singing bowl. So we've got, got the, the singing bowl, and that's like has to be one of my favourites. Mm -hmm. I sometimes like if I'm doing one on ones with people, I like them to have the music. So the the water MP3 is also one of my other favourites. Uh, I love the ankle gaiters um, What's an because ankle so an ankle gaiter it goes around the ankle. It's a buoyant um, device, yeah. but it's yeah. like a triangle. Yeah. So you can actually shift it depending on what muscle groups you want to work. So you'd have the, the thicker parts, if you imagine the base of that of that triangle where my thumbs are. Yeah. Um, if you want to work, you know, um, the frontal um, planes of the body or yeah. frontal chain of the body, you'd be putting it towards the front and then off to the side if you want to work the lateral and to the back if you want to work yeah. the posterior chain yeah. of the body. Um, so that goes around the ankle. Uh, there's always going to be noodles, but my favourite flotation devices would have to be what I started learning when I uh, studied uh, four years, and I've still got some more units to go. Alexander George's water healing dance, and that's incredible. So it's it derives originally from the origins of Watsu, but it's not Watsu. It's mm -hmm. it's dance. Do you know? Are you familiar with water dance, water healing dance? I by Alexander George. Yeah, not a lot. The ballet dancer. So that inspired me a lot to actually improve what I was doing in aqua balance dance as well, I have to admit. Um, so uh, what he uses is this, uh, if you could imagine the inside of a bean bag, yeah. you know, it's got all the little yeah. pebbles. And he's got this headpiece that comes at the back of the head and then there's two sort of like um, bean bag filled handles that come underneath the armpits that mm -hmm. are are closed and held and it's the most incredible support to to allow your your cervical spine to be in that beautiful neutral position in the water without actually being held so um unfortunately i've only got one of those <laughs> but that is definitely one of my favorite pieces of equipment mm -hmm. and um and i also love to use uh the aquatic smiley hands you've probably seen those they're like a round yeah. disc yeah. because I find that they're they're wonderful and and then I also like to use um, my little what I call my spiky chi balls in the water as well yeah. because there's a lot of things you can do not just in the hands and for for a bit of light low level resistance but you can also use them for uh, encouraging people to get good pelvis positioning a um, little bit of massage in the water as well mm -hmm. so um, I love those as well yeah my favorite you, toys yeah so uh, with the aqua stretch of course we have a neck collar which I've had um, uh, made, I've got one, mm. one I had made over I here, here which, Ooh, uh, I'd like to see that yeah that, mm. I'll have to get your address and I'll send you one um, and but I also use weights which um, yes I had some cuffs made for the ankles because over here it's very difficult to get things brought into the country and especially now we've left the EU it's probably going to be even more difficult but yeah. I've, got, I've got the cuffs made and then I um so I've got the weighted bags which is very interesting using those in the pool to actually create mm. a traction, which is very beautiful but I've also um got some marine foam and cut okay. to the shape that they can go in so they actually are dual purpose which is quite nice so i've got they wonderful can go yeah they can be resistive so yeah, yeah sounds good. trying to sort of keep things economical over here um no. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, all the pools have a, have the noodles yeah uh, 
and you've got the stuff that sort of like they use for the for the swimming yeah. lessons yeah um you know f finding that sort of something that is that allows you especially if you're doing sort of the therapy mm. type work with people and you're mm. sort of helping the body to ma maneuver and release it's, yes um you know it's getting sort of something that also allows you to be close enough and isn't intrusive so it's it's interesting to see what people use and and how they can sort of be creative mm. with the equipment that's that's yeah. available so yeah. yeah actually also the um the thigh cuffs which are the the ones that i've got are a soft uh, styrofoam mm -hmm. and they go around pretty much your leg like a like a garter like a yeah. wedding garter i yeah. call people so they know where to place it um in terms of uh supporting you know the more heavier dense part of their their body yeah. and they're wonderful mm -hmm. for flotation as well and they just have a velcro yeah yeah, I've, I've, I've got, um, I've probably got something similar. I'm just trying to think of the company that I've, <laughs> I've got it in America. So when I've been to the ATRI, mm. which uh, mm. that's a, a phenomenal conference. I mean, it's going to be live this year. I usually go out and teach for Ruth, um, love Ruth Sober. And, oh, yes. Yeah, Ruth. yeah <laughs> absolutely. So I, I, I go out and teach for her, but this year, unfortunately, the internationals, you know, we just can't travel. We can't, we can't leave the country. So, um, oh. so I'll be missing it this year. But we did oh. it virtually last year, which is very interesting, isn't it? How, you know, we, we started this conversation saying that we miss the pool and it's one thing that we can't sort of take yeah. um, yeah. and teach sort of like the aqua stuff online. But it's amazing how versatile we've become and we have done conferences, um, you yes. know, Hayley and I did one last October. In fact, we've got one that we'll, um, we're we starting to plan for this October as well. Great. And and just how we can sort of like partake on and give our knowledge over yeah. this, this sort of this environment of, of a screen. It's, you know, yeah. We've become quite resourceful really, haven't we? <laughs> we certainly have. And, you know, like I was training, not last weekend, but the week before, um, one woman in the Blue Mountains and um, and two that were in uh, Victoria. Mm -hmm. And obviously I had to really do a lot of pre-planning and uh, recording of what I was going to show them and then taking them through how I was going to break it down. And I had to take my laptop to the pool. And I'll tell you what, it can be quite dangerous if you nearly go in with your laptop as well. Oh, <laughs> There's a bit of setting up, but I just found it, I was very um, uh, sceptical skeptical mm -hmm. that this online learning was going to work but i've i've certainly have a bit more faith now knowing that there is there is potential there is hope if someone can also be in the pool on the other end with you as well even yeah. better yeah it's yeah. amazing really when you think about it it is, it is. <laughs> the distance yet yeah, you can still communicate i think that mm. one of the nice things especially because you know i i'm dyslexic hence the green glasses um but, oh okay but uh, yeah, yeah, people think I wear sunglasses, but it's not. It's, it's a dyslexia thing. It helps the processing. Um, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's very interesting. But um, I haven't heard of it. Yeah. With with having the online stuff, you sort of can go back. Whereas when you do it live, if you haven't quite grasped something, that moment's gone. But at least true. You know, so I think having and and doing. I mean, some of the courses that we're doing, we're going to be doing as blended learning. So you'll you'll do the online yeah. education, mm. part, but, you know, we'll meet sort of set times a year to come and do some of the practical things. So you can still mm. practice, but then you can come and, because and, especially with the aqua stretch, I say, I've got to feel how people's hands are. I've got to. I've got I'd to want to feel that. That's it, that they've got mm. it. So, um, so I think, you know, that is one of the, the joys I think of the online bit is that you can go, oh, hang on, I missed that bit, rewind and, and play that bit. So, yeah, I think, you know, we, we do have to f find a way of embracing it because. Uh, yes, that's what I was just about to say. We do. We need to yeah. try and just keep on embracing what the positives are because uh, you've got two choices, despair or hope. Yes. And I think we choose hope. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so, <laughs> on that note, um, <laughs> I, I, 
I can't think of anything else at the moment to ask you. I'm That's sure fine. You will. Um, is there That's anything fine. Else that you want to share with the people that are, yeah. are listening yeah. or, or what? Yeah. yeah, just that um, I believe, you know, we, we've got great aquatic um, educators globally that quite often we think they're only in particular countries, but when I went over to Latin America, I was really blown away with what they were doing, really complex um, uh, populations like cerebral palsy and seeing um, cranial sacral therapy in the water. And like, I guess it was a real blessing for me to have a second language yeah. and be able to be exposed to this really high level therapy that really exists when I went to that Costa Rica conference. And, um, but also for people to, to realize that, um, you know, we're in this world now where we actually really can't, where we're a lot closer and we can actually start going to a lot of different countries. I, I know that most of the leaders we see are, are maybe, you know, in English spoken countries, but really, uh, make sure you look under all the shells because there's actually some really amazing dynamic therapies being developed in other languages. Mm -hmm. So hopefully if we can get through those language barriers to open our mind that there's a lot more there to learn and that we'll never stop learning. Um, it, I'm all about growth and I know you are too, Linda. And um, I even had my, my son do a well, little poke tattoo. This oh, is a, a dinka. Mm -hmm. a Dinka um, symbol. It's a really ancient symbol and it's about growth and constant learning. And I'd like to say that to everybody is, is uh, you know, keep learning. Don't think that you know it all because you don't. <laughs> no, they're the dangerous times, aren't they? When, especially when you start out in the industry. And I, in fact, I had this discussion with someone the other day because um, I was writing sorts of mains and objectives of a course. And I said, um, you know, don't sort of teach beyond your qualifications or your experience. And they said, well, you've got to take out experience bit. And I said, no, 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 because sometimes people want to get a qualification and think that they can, they, they know it now. But that's really at the end of that qualification is actually only the very beginning of the journey. Yes, <laughs> true. So, you know, it's, it's sort of like, you know, embrace what you learn and learn from everybody and just keep learning. Mm. As you say, you know, we never stop learning. And I I think that's one of the joys of life, actually, is, is the fact that, you know, the, as humans, we have that ability to learn really right up until the very, very end. And I think if you can sort of embrace that, then, then you're on a good path. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's very nice. So, OK, well, I don't want to... Um, take you away from whatever else that you're doing today and um I hopefully we can meet up sort of virtually and in person because I've uh, as I said I, th I think you know there could be a very nice union I've got some ideas that I think mm, you know, absolutely next and it all marries absolutely. it all it all interweaves absolutely and if you think if you can think of anybody that you know anybody else that would be interesting for you know for people mm. to have a chat with and that can sort of bring some more and, and enlighten everybody into to sort of some of the other things that there are in the in the aquatic environment for people to learn yeah. to well out. I do I mean uh, for me my my um my Latin American family of aquatic therapists I think are really yeah mind-blowing <laughs> Do, do they so yeah, speak, I think I think they'd be worth contacting. Yeah. Um, um, okay, but like I could always translate. Yeah, that, that was the <laughs> could other be another way to do right. it. Yeah, if you could be having it. three people on the screen. That's fine. <laughs> I think people are used to that now. I think you one way to phone. yeah to access it, and I think um, I, I I just felt quite strongly that um, wow. I just don't think half of the Western world knows about these amazing um, lovely. therapists. Yeah, if you're happy to sort of do some translation. Absolutely, for us, yeah. That would be really mm. nice. So 
we can uh, I think maybe you know we can communicate over that and make some arrangements mm. that'll be quite exciting for everybody so yeah okay. yeah absolutely okay. well okay have a nice day I hope okay. you're gonna get breakfast now <laughs> thank you very much uh, I'll, st I'll start working what is the time for me yeah, it's just gone seven o'clock so all right my, okay my first client will be here at eight <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness well i'm having a day to myself today Very well i've got work to do but i'm gonna just your decide level. when yeah absolutely. <laughs> absolutely well enjoy your beautiful sunshine the sun's up I will. in a bit we've had very strange weather over here at the moment very oh, you poor thing. Very cold but um we've had, we've had a cyclone oh. um but not where i am but yeah. not far from where i am so <laughs> that's a bit strange as well Okay, well, have a, have a lovely day. It's been an absolute pleasure talking. Oh, pleasure, Linda. Pleasure, Linda. Yeah, pleasure. Yeah. And, um, Thank you. We'll see you soon. Bye. Take care. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye.